Hey cousins, it's your favorite cousin in the world, don't call me white girl, here again to tell you about my subscription. If you go to moremona.com today, you can subscribe to my podcast and get extra bonus episodes. That's right. We give out extra episodes. We give out exclusive BTS that you can't see anywhere else. But my favorite part of the subscription, hands down, would have to be the Discord. Discord is like a big group group cousin chat where we in there doing all kinds of things. I don't think I really explained the Discord enough. Discord um, is so many different ways that you can chat. You get in there. It's kind of like a family vibe, a little bit of camaraderie. Everybody has this one thing in person me um and everybody just chatting building their own relationships building their own bonds and shit um for sure i seen some girls doing some like uh lose weight get fit group and um how to save money group and all that i stay away from all that i just stay in the main groups where we talk a lot about sex and we exchange pictures X-rated ones. Join mormona.com today. You can either pay $6.99 monthly or you can take the big dive and pay $59.99 so you don't have to worry about um, resubscribing or making sure you're missing missing out on anything, any information, any um, exclusive content or anything. So go to mormona.com today and at least check it out. See if you want to join. And um, when you do join, tap in on Discord. Say what's up to the kid. I'm always there 24-7. I live in the Discord. Everybody knows it. Mormona.com. Welcome to the Don't Call Me White Girl podcast. This is a special episode, man, because fucking Tom's here. Say hi, Tom. You're Tom. Phelps is here only 60% of the way because he's extremely ill. Do you not want to talk about that? About your sickness? (laughs) I don't know if you want to. It's just a little flu, I think, or something. Shit just happened a couple hours ago. That's what sucks. Talk to the this morning. He was peachy. Yeah. (laughs) We had the best conversation, 6 22 in the morning. He's never up his own. He ran Word. three miles, smoked three bucks. Then I did not sound like Power this. Washed the house, <laughs> walked the dogs. He ain't got a dog. He walked the neighbor dog. Because <laughs> she got a problem with her gout. He a good. <laughs> we pull up to work. This one <laughs> happened. It happened like instantaneous. It was weird. We got a lot of. There's a film crew in here. They about 37 deep. I don't know if y'all want to say <laughs> hi for the audio. Can they have to yeah, yeah. sound Word. like a team, a football team? And ain't it another young boy in here? Oh, he downstairs, the baby. Oh, uh-huh. the baby downstairs. Look, so I told his dad, I said, I could tell he a wild one because when I walked in, we, we locked eyes. Ain't nobody saying that, right? So I said, what's up? But I said it aggressive on purpose, him. What's up? <laughs> you know, I can't just be happy to have that exchange. Like, you already practice what we do. With my what's up? We say what's up back like this. What's up? I was talking on social media earlier today because I had a flashback of like summer as a child, and I really thought about it because I was thinking about my daughter's summer and my son's summer and type of summer they're having. These kids are so lame. Lit. Yo. They not lit like how we was growing up, bro. Like. I was watching something, and it was a white guy, and he was talking briefly about, like, growing up in the 90s. And what he said was like, yeah, because, you know, nowadays it's different. You know, back in the day, they'll be like, go Rome, see you in two days, forwards for berries, my Like, make it back when I got to go to work, you know? Mm-hmm. But now, I guess people, you know, you, you tracking your kids or whatever. But I can distinctly remember, like, North Philly summers and, like, summer nights in North Philly. And, like, that first summer that you finally get a bike. Because if you're in the hood, depending on how it is around there, everybody don't have a bike. And you lucky to get a bike. God forbid your neighborhood where y'all share two bikes and y'all got to do little nasty evil chance on said two bikes. It ain't really nobody bike, but we all got the bike because everybody don't nobody got a dad. And the one person that did get a bike, this don't know how to attach the spokes. And it was just sitting in the basement. You know what I mean? Well, and I, I remember. If you had a pop in the hood, you probably had a bike. Bro, you would get a bike, right? But you already know how you got a bike. You stole bikes. That's just was a. It's just it's a lifestyle. You go to the bike. You go to the pop. You go to the poppy store. Everybody lay their bikes in them steps. You come out. It's always one that lost their bike. You know what I mean? It's just a part of the culture. Um, maybe it's a North Philly thing. I don't know. But a lot of lost their bikes. We wasn't walking around on bike chains. We stole the bike that just got stole from us. 
I ain't, um, I never got my bike stole, and then depending on, like, what store we went into, nah, somebody about to stand outside and watch these joints. Oh, okay. Because we, some, by the time we stop at the, the store, we might be so far from where we at, like, this joint gets stole out here. It's, you feel me? We, ain't, we can't call nobody back then. I feel like we had different, child, we had similar childhoods, but different because your mom actually cared about you. Yeah, but nah, 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 but my, my bike shit, that was all in Philly. I didn't have a bike at my mom's crib, so I was like, right, probably but your like mother actually grade. loved you. Um, so with me, being that I was raised by wolves, um, I can recall getting that first mongoose, and I definitely had some type of brand or whatever, and being big as <laughs> and putting the hug in the back of it and making it a motorcycle. I can remember when I learned how to ride a bike and stand up. Never a Willie. I was a fat girl, but I would I learned how to like stand up while I'm riding. And all the drug dealers. This is a true story. All the drug dealers were on the corner of my block, so I'm like, boom! I'm gonna stand up the whole time, even when I go around the curve. I'm never gonna sit down and show these drug dealers. I'm really skilled. I hit the joint, missed, skid down the street by my face. I literally skid. You went over the handlebars? Of course I did. And then I skid by face, chin to ear, Freddy Cougar style, and ripped the whole yeah, skin on the side of my face. you know what you was doing yet. You're not supposed to squeeze the front brake, big dog. You know what the coolest part about that was, though? One of the more successful drug dealers, his name was Ricky. He carried me like this, like a baby. <laughs> and I remember in that moment, I felt like, wow, this must be what it feels like to have a father. <laughs> He kept saying, it's okay, mommy. Come and find out later, he was trying to my mom crazy. So he probably prayed for me to fall just to get the oh, that that's door. that's a good one. Yeah, he was the who would take us to Chuck E. Cheese. Shout out to Albany Street. Where y'all at? I remember my grandma beat up Monica. Monica, are you watching? My grandma beat you. My grandma whooped your that day because we was playing double dutch and you pushed me out the way because we would play paybacks and your daughter was so ugly and you were so protective. North Philly girls. Remember, or hit city girls, period. Remember you would be outside all day and your parent would be at work or your parents in the crack house. It was the 90s. And um, it would be that one adult that was like deeply involved in all kid politics. And it would yeah. be like, ho, 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 it's not your turn. Yeah. We was back here playing catch a girl, freaky girl. Did you notice that? Was you watching? We was over in this corner humping. Pants pressing. Whore. I remember pants pressing entered my life. Do you? Pants pressing. That's what we call it. I'm older than you, babe. We call it pants pressing. That's where you get in position like you just rub to that carpet burn. Nah. Y'all never grinded on people? Y'all are losers. Are we serious? Yeah, you might get your dry hump on while you're playing a game, but not just on the regular. Like that shit you said when they dry hump on while you're doing what, sweetheart? Like if you, yeah, catch your oh, yeah. like that, yeah. But other than that, just out in the open. Nah. No, you would start to make out a little bit and then you would like, grind. y'all never, y'all went straight to f***ing on y'all whores? Nah, I'm thinking you talking about just on some, you talking about the person you're dealing with. Bro, it, it, a lot, a plethora of ways. You go over to somebody's house, it's mom ain't home. Right? Oh, yeah, you yeah, you yeah. Apartment complex, right? And y'all in the elevator, and it's your time to walk past. You just so happen to now you're just stuck in that weird position in the elevator hitting the button. Cause both of you like the way it feels, but you don't know how to get back in position, so you just stay and sway. I ain't put myself in them predicaments like that too much. Cause losers. I thought I was the loser. Nah, I wasn't. I mean, I lost my virginity in 12th grade, so maybe I do a lot of extra shit. I had, I had, um, I lost my virginity before that, but you know how when you first have sex, it's not like a well, at least for me. Yeah, that's the exact opposite. Most people I know, once they <laughs> like rabbits, and nah. most of them ended up pregnant. Nah. So I lost my virginity probably, um, or I was probably pregnant within three months. <laughs> yeah, so I lost my virginity. We were just constantly <laughs> all day long, like not yeah. knowing what to do or how or why. Or why. No rhythm or reason, just <laughs> like rabbits. Just constantly, just chafed, just <laughs> there ain't nothing left. Yeah. Um... Anyway, but yeah, back to the summers in North Philly. And, um, you know, the bike gave you this unlimited amount of freedom. And it was such a, like, a big deal. Like, I can distinctly remember riding my bike and getting to a certain speed and feeling like this independent free part. Like, feeling better about Because I had really a childhood, so I didn't have a lot of happy moments in my childhood. But I can remember coasting down some kind of hill in this urban jungle that I'm surviving in. And and it's so much wind and I can't really hear and I can't really see, but I'm just like floating. I remember feeling like cool. You what know? good places y'all got to ride around in, in North Philly though? This the thing though. Bike riding was such a thing. It was totally normal for you to be from North Philly and you just rode down west. Yeah. Or you to be down South Philly and you just rode down West Philly. Like That's y'all what never crossed doing. tail time. Y'all never crossed tail riding a bike? Yeah, I, probably not because y'all was gangbanging because South Philly is like all my options are gangbangers. I never went to North though. I only went Southwest and you feel me, Upper Derby. I was staying there. I was never going to North. That's 
too far. I feel like North Philly people, you either went uptown, like Germantown, up places you wasn't, or you just went deeper in North Philly in different hoods. We should just go fuck with white people because North was for our shit. Yeah, yeah drive, North. Like, drive grocery like Second Street. Yeah. Like, stadiums and shit. Yeah. Y'all wasn't as bad as us. I remember coming back, like leaving the house towards the morning of the day and not returning home until like 11, 12 a.m. Like, I, like people say the street like they, but again, my mom did not give a f I was just outside. I would just be out, you know, like in, in the, the street. summertime. No uh, curfew or nothing. My like grandmother's that. house, it was street lights. Oh, and you know, it was so bad. When the street lights would come on, she would get to yell at my name and everybody on the block would go. Roll call just for my grandma. That's it was traumatizing. Wrong. She traumatized me. She was a terrible person. But terrible. you know how I veto, like when you got the good block, like it's always gonna be outside. You feel me? Like everybody know each other, so it's like and I had young parents, so your folks might be outside. It wasn't that big of a deal. You feel me? Yeah, I had a parent because the other one was upstate. Um and the other one was at work. And also I also grew up in the nineties and with the nineties, it was like I'm gonna be honest, it was like 60 40 on the drug addict tip. You knew which friends who didn't have parents because they suffered from a mm -hmm. disease of addiction, and you knew who, who, who did have parents that could help because it was all automatic thing that you fed them, that they got to play, um, stuff like that. I can remember my Aunt Frida, God bless my Aunt Frida. She died, and um, at her funeral, you know, they give people a chance to talk. The line was so long just from her impact late 80s, early 90s, feeding kids because she had a bodega. Mm. So imagine how many hungry kids she catch you still and make you clean, still feed you. you yeah. know? She made such a big impact in these um, these these parentless orphans because that's really what it was. If you don't know a lot about that era, um, a good documentary to watch is Crack. I think I told you all that before. If I haven't, mm -hmm. I don't know why. That's a great documentary um, just about the whole era and it's not a lot of fluff. It's not a lot of conspiracy theory. It's factual. Um, just how the government um, aided and abetted drug dealers back then, and it flooded us it mm -hmm. up, and it um it wiped out neighborhoods. Like it, it, I mean, it had a lasting effects like in so many ways. And even now, when you look at like um, the newer epidemics, you know what I mean, with like um, the opiate epidemic and um, I guess just like the the fake pill thing and the fentanyl thing. I think the difference then was is like it felt like it hit the ghetto at a point where like people was already actively living lives. So now the matriarch or the family is smoking crack now. So mm -hmm. lady they used to organize the dinners and the funerals and the you know, she smoking crack now. That's the top of the house. You feel me? Yeah. And then it would just trickle down. And then on top of that, I think what a lot of people don't realize is <coughs> People, because I just watch people have this debate. Oh no, I just watch. I, I, I like College Hill. I would love to be on College Hill BT. I would love it. You ain't even really gotta give me much. Just let me eat for free. Give me a ride up there. I'll stay all. I'll stay on the campus. Just let me know the rules. Am I allowed to hit anything off up and down on the campus? What's the rules? I would love to do College Hill. Dead serious. Time. Put it together. But um, Carlos, my nigga Carlos is on there, and he's just basically talking about how being a drug addict is a choice and how people choose to be homeless and drug addicts, and they don't have to be. Um, of course, I think Carlos is very funny. I think he's very intelligent. But of course, I don't believe it. It's, it's not true. Mm -hmm. I mean, factually, um, the, the addiction is a disease. Um, it is something that you get from your fucking parents. You're predisposed to it prior to even being born. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be addicted to an illegal drug, but it's, it's things that you're overdoing or doing in an unhealthy lifestyle, I mean, an unhealthy fashion mm -hmm. in an effort to feel whole, which isn't fucking normal. You should feel whole anyway. You should wake up and feel okay anyway. And, and a lot of y'all, when you home, a lot of y'all write me and you talk about being depressed or having feelings of like, you know, being Shmuel Schmeidel and shit like that. And it's like, bro, that shit's not a joke. And I know I got dry humor and all that, but like, you don't want that shit to creep up on you on a bad day and, and ain't nobody there to call. And it's, you know, it's quiet in that room and we had a few drinks and you didn't fuck around, took your life if you didn't even, you know, want to necessarily. If you having issues, you need to reach out to somebody and talk to somebody about it. You know, I pray that y'all have supported people in your lives that you can at least call. But if not, where's the numbers? Call the 1-800 number, child. Call the 1-800 number. I used to call the suicide lady. Ask her what you got on. Did you bring lunch? Do you have a T-Mobile? Can I call you on your cell phone? Is Beth Ann your real name? You probably ain't never been been Shmuel Schmeidel, bitch. Have you? 
But yeah, I love y'all, man. Take care of yourselves. It's not normal to wake up and feel like shit every day. And there's things that you can do. But ultimately, um, sometimes you just need extra help and you should get some. What was I talking about before I was talking about that? Summers. Oh, yes. Yeah, summers in North Philadelphia. Oh, my God. Um, and we would be outside all day. And I remember they would say, oh, you smell like outside. Go back outside. Yeah. <laughs> That's for a fact I know these kids have shitty lives because that smell doesn't even exist anymore. I remember getting in the tub and the water being so dirty, you have to drain it out and just take another bath. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. I remember leaving and I would be my pale sub. I come home, I'm your complexion every time. Dusty, dark. Oh, my yeah. God. I love being dusty, dirty, dark. Mm-hmm. I used to look like literally you could see. And I'm a high yellow bitch for real. I keep a black line right here. <laughs> That if you lick your finger and scratch good, it peel off. It's a scratch and sniff. No too, not too smelly, but pretty sticky. Your facial expressions are not bothered with mine. When's your birthday? September 14th. Yeah, you gonna get behind that thing next. September 14th, my ass. I'm not working with no Virgo. When's your birthday? August 9th. It's worse. It gets worse <laughs> and worse. Miguel, when's your fucking birthday? June 30th. Okay. Nah. <laughs> is that a fucking cancer? Is that a cancer? Yeah. I could stomach you. I'm almost scared to ask you. What's your birthday? June the 6th, 1996. <laughs> Libra, September the 29th. I like Libra, guys. Oh, see? A lot. Yeah. But like sexually. You know what okay. I mean? Not friendly. Because you don't like my hair. No, nah, I, like I don't like you, period. But All right, second so plan. my boy. Um... Yeah, what was I talking about? You might remember. Oh my God, I don't want to talk about Ayana Bazan because I love her a lot, but what the fuck was that? I want to call Jason and want to know why am I not invited to the awards. The whole her giving Jonathan Majors that award and the way she did it. Well, no, please explain. Okay, Is, Can we not talk about it? Man, uh, what well, text it to me and I'm going to see if I can say it. I don't know. I She gives him this award. I think it's the Perseverance Award. He is fresh off that domestic violence shit. You know what I mean? That domestic violence shit is not suggestive. It's, it's been proven, right? Isn't there videos or something? Like, it was it's a factual thing, and he's felt guilty, right? But she is, her speech was like, as a victim of domestic violence of nine years in a relationship with domestic, as a domestic violence a survivor from mm-hmm. in a 10-year relationship, I want to give you this award. Like, what are we doing? Why are we doing that? Like, time-wise, and y'all know, I'm the number one bitch that say nigga need to get another chance. Da-da-da. This nigga's still on papers, my nigga. Like, why are we moving this fast to get, you know? Like, fuck it, we gave him no award. But the speech is strange, bro. Bro, it was like she wiping this nigga tears, holding him. Oh, it was like a moment type of thing. It was a moment over some geriatric porn. It was about to, that beat was about to drop. I couldn't call it. What is up with porn lately? I tried to surf through some porn the other day. It was it was horrible. What's going on? Surf through what problem? Pop man? it, just pop up at the pop up, then the volume get loud. Would you like to fuck some <laughs> Like what's up with that, bro? How you know that's my flavor? And I thought that you weren't allowed to say <laughs> Y'all block it out every time I say <laughs> You got to, bro. We fucked it. They hear me say <laughs> we going down. But that, I'm look, you know what I mean? I'm looking for a nice little PG, you know what I mean? A little PG scene, nothing crazy. You know what I mean? I, 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 I little say, step, brother. I'll put you in the right direction. <laughs> I'll put you in the right direction. Bro, I'm telling you. I don't know what you be watching. I'm looking for, I'm looking for a little, you know, you know my shit getting a little weird, you know? Nah, I know. Looking for a good scene. And I'm telling you, my volume doubles and it says, do you want to fuck a within 10 miles of you? It's like, bro, I'm trying to rub one out, my nigga. <laughs> like, how the fuck am I rub one out? What site you, you want to talk about? Bro, I Google ebony porn like a good older woman would. Googling porn is crazy. How am I find it if I don't Google it? <laughs> ask somebody. It's still like back in the day. You bro, can you help somebody. me find something I can rub one out too, bro? Because I, I don't you. get no dick and I'm a loser. I got you. Then I got to tell you my category. Get the fuck out of here, my nigga. And look what you ran into. Yo, it was loud. Would you like to fuck a it's like, bro, maybe how far? If you, Ten miles if you eight, find like, a good site, it's like cold. That you bitch got a ride, I got to pick her up. If you, <laughs> if, if you ever cross something, come Just across joking, something good, you got to share with the bros. You can't, it's not, you're not supposed to keep it to yourself. Phelps. 
I'm not calling you, my man, asking about porn when I can just say, can you come bust his ass? Go take a, go take a shower. Go ahead, bend it over. Go ahead, take a shower. Go in here, lay down. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't get it that first, nigga. <laughs> Did you like a pineapple? It's very acidic. Nah, I don't wanna. You over here sweating? You fuck up. Get my boy a nap. You get my boy get some help. I'm here. not high. I feel fine. Well, it's water coming from your forehead. Tom, get Phelps a napkin, please. He is pouring down sweat. Cause I don't feel good. He's sick. That shit just happened. Yeah, but man, the status of porn is crazy. I miss. I miss. You know what I miss? VHS. Yeah, matter of fact, I'm gonna take it to you right now. So you, you yeah, so I had that bitch on tuck. Put an exclamation on that bitch so I can find it. Then put the word porn in all the caps. So if I'm searching it, it'll pop up. It get dark late at night, boy. It get dark in that room, man. It's already cold. Nah, these the these the, the, get dark. These the break glass for emergencies. But you like to fuck a all right, that's nah. one. Oh, um, he's tickled. I like that. I like you. That's right. Laugh with your whole fucking chest. I hate when people want to laugh and they'll hold it back. That shit be blowing me. Mm -hmm. I always make Miguel laugh. I can't see him, but I know he back there. I'm going to get the shake and Miguel be cracking the fuck up. Y'all don't know, like, as a person, like, that's my business. It's, like, it matters when people laugh. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that at first. But, like, motherfuckers laughing at that shit be turning me up. It shit make me want to really, like, you know, like, tell jokes. It's funny. Oh, I know. Look at him, I know. Phelps just sent me free porn. Oh, I can't say it. Don't say the site now, nah, cause they it's they a, gonna fuck us up. They gonna fuck it up. It done yeah. it it got fake shut down, cause it be like. Mind you, you know I know. I'm gonna tell was, you who won there. No, okay, but let me tell you this. You know how I know I was on a bullshit site? They start suggesting Bernie Mac daughter. Ew. Like, what you mean uh, Lawrence Fishburne daughter? Bernie Mac. Oh, you talking about the joint from the show? Ew. Nah, nah, nah. And pink lingerie. Like, come on, bro. That's my little sister. Why would you do that? But you know she just dropped the OnlyFans. You know that, right? Did you know that? That she dropped the OnlyFans? I'm not interested. The pretty dark, the dark skin pretty one. You know what I'm talking about? No, but she looked crazy a little bit. And guess now. what she said? What? Them checks small. Them residual checks. Yeah. She, she need money and she can't be listening to what everybody got to say about her either. All right, all right, let me move on. Um, the high school I went to. Thank you, bro. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's like that. It's like Thank that. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> oh, you should have said that. To we was just talking about porn, right? <laughs> so I was saying that, that, like, what's the status of porn? Because I was surfing in that, and it was taking me the longest just to find some good old wholesome shit. You know what I mean? And um, I'm searching, searching, Tom, and then boom, big ass voice announcement. Would you like to fuck a? I'm like, bro, they like, oh, she's seven miles away or whatever. And I'm like, bro, like seven exactly, or are we talking five more leaning towards five. You know what I mean? <laughs> Is she mobile? Is she driving? Anyway, it sucked. And then it kept being those like cookie things popping up. So then Phelps sends me and <laughs> Phelps does not want the website mentioned. But Tom no. I gave you that joint too. Mm -hmm. Told you. You supposed to share with the bros. It's like that. You ain't never share with me. You just told me not to, nigga. Now you. <laughs> but listen, he said I know some niggas on there. No freaky. No freaky. I'm about to send you who on there, John. New school. Who this? Tamar Braxton, Angela White, Claudia Jordan, Saucy Santana, Carlos Miller, and Swaggy P. That's who. June twentieth only on BET Plus. College Hill Celebrity Edition is back, and school is in session at Xavier University in New Orleans. You are never too old or too famous to get a real education, and the cast finds out just how serious HBCU academics can be. These stars of music, comedy, and social media may be used to calling the shots, but do they have what it takes to pass the test of faith and discipline that college life requires? Can Saucy chill on partying? Will Tamar make the adjustment from penthouse suites to life in the dorms? Who will break under the pressure? Stream and find out. Season 3 of College Hill Celebrity Edition streaming June 20th, only on BET+. Still need BET+. Join the millions who stream black culture. Visit BET dot plus now to sign up and learn more. It's an everyday uphill battle cooling this Gucci down. 
It's not a game or a joke. I can get some big girl tips if y'all need them. If you're not blessed with air, I need you to take about three, four showers a day. I need you to take your box fan. I need you to get that dust up out that motherfucker. I need you to put it in your window. Okay? Put it in there backwards so it can suck in the cool air and put out the hot air. Is that true? I don't know. It's a myth from North Philly and we believed it. <laughs> right or wrong? That's the air conditioner back in our day. Tom, there ain't no air conditioner. Box fan backwards in the window. Yeah. Come on, man. Y'all be acting fake. Definitely. I don't know if y'all grew up, you know, across that poverty line, man. I'm being real, man. You know? You know who was a passed down recipe in my family for, for years? That's all we ate. And I thought it was a delicacy until I realized we was just poor. Macaroni and soy sauce. Yeah, we you ate said that, for that dinner, before. I was like, like daily. Macaroni and soy sauce. Has anybody here ever had that? Macaroni and soy sauce. And you straight smiled at our poverty part. That's cool. I don't even want to say it with my name because Mordecai was like, so right you was privileged. I ain't going to say what? nothing. No, what you say? What he say? I said, I ain't going to say mine because you're going to be like, Phil, you was privileged. Knowing his mom probably was some motherfucking Gouda mozzarella cheese. Nah, 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 nah. She well, my mom, nah, it wasn't. My mom. Goulash. Nah, I would probably say the struggle shit for me would probably be like steak on. <laughs> steak was not good for you. But like the Murray's John, though, not the, you feel me? Murray's was not expensive, dog. Don't do that. Babe, the poppy store still use that. The French and that's crazy. Things, but they the best Jones, though. <laughs> that's cra This boy said steak is crazy. Top. Steak them something that don't even last in the crib because it's so yeah, good. That's the, yeah. that's, the, that's the top Jones. Like, when, when was, when you should have seen Tom face when you said well, steak them. Steak them and, and select. And now they got so many better brands and better yeah, quality. Yeah. Ribeye and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I was, I was a Celeste. Stegums and Celeste, that was my... Celeste is struggle, for sure. Yeah. I would give it to Celeste. We was raised off of Murray's food. I don't, I, y'all not old enough, old enough for Murray's. Save a lot. That's you save a lot work. Good, boy. Save a lot smell like pussy in there. I was raised by Save a lot smell just like coochie in that motherfucker. Why it smell like that? It smell mm -hmm. like pussy in there, man. <laughs> It smell like pussy. It smell like pussy in here. I hate it here. Save a lot. That was the first joint I seen charging for bags. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, They've been they on that. Thing. That was their thing. Word it was, but um, I don't know, man. Save a lot was disgusting, and I remember even as a kid being embarrassed. But I didn't grow up on food stamps. My mother was a nurse, mm -hmm. so we didn't have housing. We didn't live in the projects. My mother owned a house that we lived in. She bought her first home in like 1991. I was probably. Almost fucked that up. I was a young buck. And um, I can recall moving in there and not having furniture for years, riding my bike in the living room. And I can also recall my mother owning that house. Mm -hmm. And this being her house, you know, and knowing that she could paint the walls pink. And my mother was always, like, heavy with decoration and stuff. So her room was so pink. I remember going to, I think it might have been Sears. And back then, you could get on the computer and choose the pattern you wanted your furniture to be. Mm -hmm. And she ch chose this really, really pretty cream base with olive and pink and just so nice um couches and shit and just watching my mom grind like that i really was raised around those kind of black women it wasn't any men in our family um i didn't have a lot of uncles and nobody had a dad but everybody mom had a hustle and um and my mother's side i'm the only person that's really been to prison like everybody <laughs> went out and got that money legally i ain't gonna front and say some of the systematic issues of the ghetto didn't affect us you know i have cousins uncles aunts or whatever that never worked that never finished high school that never left their neighborhood and stuff but for the most part the women in my family went and got them nursing degrees and they raised their family on it um my grandmother's grandmother was an RN. My mother's an LPN. Her mother's an LPN. I mean, they're just all nurses. Mm -hmm. That's that thing. I'm going to go get that nursing license. We're going to change the lives in this house, you know? Yeah. Um, but it was like some poverty shit. Like, I can remember my aunt um, house burning down and her giving it to... Her sibling, which was my other aunt, she had five kids and they moved in a burned down house. Mm -hmm. And I, the floors were black and melted from the fire. And I remember my other side of my family, my father's side would drop me off there. And I remember them kind of snickering because if I had like white brand new Reeboks, they would be black. Because they knew the floor they would be cooked, yeah. And it was like, you know, we all broke, we all in the hood. But of course, if you could find somebody that's doing worse than you, you look down on them. That's the way of the mm -hmm. hood, you know. But I can remember them being so disgusted and I loved it there. Like I never. That's how it be, like at them cousins. 
cousin's house that's dirty a little bit, them the best joints. Dirty a lot of bit, yeah. <laughs> Nothing to drink. I remember like they with potatoes, pasta, soy sauce. Like that's what we ate. Like that's it. You feel me? Anything fancy or you want it different, you go. We gotta go steal it because you're not going to get it. You know. Yeah. And I remember the adults in the house would like had Pepsi's locked in their room and shit. Like I seen that. Oh no, nah, my shit I used close. to be on that. And guess what? I used to be in there. Fuck. Cause it, you the it, special kid, so she gave it to you, or did you steal it? Nah. It, so the whole thing was, was I didn't understand that. Like the first time I seen it, I'm like, what the you fuck? You mean there's snacks up here? You ain't I went storming through the room. I'm like, shit, like I'm like nephew, nothing. Give me this shit. The fuck is you talking about? I went in there and just start bullying. They like, shit. here her son come. She just like he just like his fucking mom. Cause they know that. But you don't come from that. Yeah, we yeah. share everything. Like yeah. you know how much I share, even though I'm yeah. like, a, you feel me? Like yeah. you tuck. Yeah. Watch this. And they don't want me to call my mom because now it's they really going to get crazy. Give it up. Listen, that's the best way you could put it. That's the best. I wasn't that kid, but I had it a little bit because my dad was the one doing all that time in jail. So it was like this, oh, he going to fuck you up thing in the air. Oh, but, yeah. And he like didn't that. do much because, I mean, especially you figure I got molested. You know what I mean? So oh, it's my. like, how much really did you do from jail on some protection shit? You know? But I do remember him calling home like, she can't get a beating. Like, we all beat everybody. Like, don't beat my child. Like, I don't want her getting beat. And I can remember, like, everybody having to line up to get their ass whooped, and I'm on the side. Like, yeah, I'm not even getting in that line, Papa. <laughs> I've never actually honestly got a beating with a belt before. I've never got a beating with a belt. I got a couple of them. With a belt? Yeah, that's crazy. I was drawing, though. I mean, bit. whatever. I don't know. I think that. <laughs> We beat our kids with belts because of slavery. And when I think of that, I don't want any part of that. Mm -hmm. I am totally with you squaring up and boxing your son head off. Like, beat him the fuck up. Black eye him. Fuck it. Don't tell nobody I said yeah. that. Punch this nigga in his I got throat. way more hands, but Ari, you feel me? I probably got... Nah, you I'm going to punch you in your rib area. I used to get hit all in my chest. That Listen, I'm going to, like, but I grab caught you the by the back like of your once. shirt and kick you up your ass. I'm with all that. And I'm... Hands and feet. I always been that type of parent. Ugh, I might kick you in the back. I'm gonna keep it real. We might gotta cut this out. But to put belt the ass to a child, I can't do it. Nah, but I will say I'm this. I'm sorry, y'all. I ain't never have to like. It wasn't no stripped down situation. It was like that shit right there. Bro, tank. the thought of a belt, a switch, any of that, I cannot yeah. do. Y'all got beatings with belts, honestly. Damn, y'all are southern though, right? Y'all from down south, right? Oh, y'all from DC? I thought y'all from VA. Let's go one by one. Where are you from? He's like, told me he's from Cali when he first met me. Where are you from? <laughs> I don't from PG County. You from PG too? Where are you from? DC. You from DC? You from the hood? Are you the gangsta of the group? You from Northeast? I'm from um, Barry Farms. Right. Um, where are you from? Um, Camden and Camden up here? Oh, okay. That's a double whammy and negative. Because y'all can't drive probably either way. Um, I feel like North Carolina, of course, and VA is the South. But DC, PG County, to me, that's just like, where I'm from, you feel me? I'm from Philly, you know. And this area is Delaware, which is very close to Philly, like similar, yeah. even how the vibes are kind of, but it's slower and it's southern. And this is considered the first southern state when you're going down south. So let that be clear. Like, to give you an example, here a cop kill a nigga and he doesn't lose his job. He does nothing happens. That's like that. Yeah. It's a case of this guy named Bam, if you ever want to look it up. He's in a wheelchair yelling at the cops, they kill him, say he had a gun, this nigga can't even walk. Yeah, and nobody's in trouble. And then around that time, it was another state trooper. He got somebody in custody. He's whooping his ass, and he starts to he proceeds to kick him in the head a couple times. He gives some permanent brain damage. He's still a state trooper. He still works. So that's Delaware. That's that's a way big difference from Philly. Philly's progressive. They're going to riot in Philly. They're going to protest. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Delaware still has like that racist kind of thing in the air. Um, in the first ever Black Lives Matter rally, I, I, I let it. I was like the lead speaker. Can you fucking believe that? Mona X, babe. That's who I am. Um, I'm telling you, listen, you have a good memory. In 30 years, I'm going to end up in activism and politics. Watch. You're going to be shy. You're going to be like, that bitch told me that. I never told nobody that. Remember that I told you that. At least, at least, bare minimum, jail reform and, like, domestic uh, violence. I'm Thank telling you. That's what we do now. Huh. We work for his dad runs a, a company. It's called Metalworks. And basically, all the people are for reform, um, mental illness, all that. So he provides houses, everything, and back in um, DC. 
So I work for his dad. So his dad, I, I work for them, and I do all of their marketing and videos for reform. Yeah, y'all should introduce me so I can give a speech or something. Love Real shit, let's, let's link up, okay? Um, but yeah, Mona X, what was I talking about? Beans. Let me, let me, come on. But okay, never, so all you niggas have been beat with belts, all of you. Yes. Never been slapped in my face, though. Never been hit in my face. Bonus five points. Tom, you been beat with a belt? <laughs> yeah. My mom and dad? No. Like my, my dad, my dad Your mother wouldn't beat you. My mom, my mom. He was the favorite. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've never got beat. I can recall my grandmother smacking me across the face. Smacking across the face is very demeaning, but yeah. she did it on purpose. She, I was a teenager at the time. She did it in front of a bunch of teenagers. She leaned back this far oh to my. give me a good pimp pop. Damn, he looked disgusted. My grandma was kind yeah. of a fucked up person, though. She that's, can't help that's it. That's a bad job. Yeah, she smacked me across the face in front of a group of boys. It, it, it was crushing. And you know, that's back when like everything boys was like, Oh my God, boys are coming. You know yeah. what I mean? But that was the point. She wanted to like humble me in front of them boys. Yeah, yeah she wanted to embarrass me. Um, my mother used to get mad and get frustrated and she would punch me on the top of my head. My mother is five foot. I'm five seven. So that didn't last long because once I shot past, this bitch couldn't really leech up to go ahead and get that bang on. So that was over with. So we got her up out of here. My dad taught me how to cuss one day randomly. I was four. He like, say pussy. Pussy ass nigga, bitch ass nigga. Fuck you, nigga. Fuck, taught me the whole thing. Go back to the house to chill with him and his friends. I start practicing. He get mad. He got really upset because I wouldn't stop. I kept calling everybody in there a pussy ass nigga and a pussy ass bitch. I was doing different pussy combinations that he told me. Pussy ass nigga, pussy bitch, pussy. And if you're at home, you don't know. In Philadelphia, the one way secret Dragon Ball Z secret code to get a man to fucking unalive was to call him a pussy. <laughs> it's a big deal in Philadelphia. Calling a black man a pussy in Philadelphia it might be a death wish. <laughs> <laughs> It's serious. It's so weird. It's like there's a secret little button. Pussy. And you got to say it with like more of a WPW. Pussy. Yeah, pussy. Yeah. Like that. Like pussy. I don't do nothing to you. I'm like, pussy. Yeah, you know, the, uh, it got to be in the heat the, of the moment. Uh, peanut, peanut yeah, bottle. remember? Yeah. 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 You know what's so crazy? <laughs> you know what's so crazy? <laughs> why, you going, out. why are you going to do that? <laughs> we cutting it out. Cut it out. Cut it yeah, out. I'm He's a gangster. Cut it out. Like, where'd you know him? Huh? <laughs> He's a drug dealer. Why wouldn't you know him? What? Don't make me tell your business. <laughs> I used to sell drugs back in the day. Let's all get to know each other. What drugs did y'all sell? You first. <laughs> Northeast, which was over there selling. A little loud. Your face got red like me. <laughs> I ain't your P.O. nigga. I ain't gonna tell on you. A little weed. A little weed. Nothing crazy. A little weed, a little meth, a little eat. Nah. Next. I ain't sell shit. I don't believe you. What you tell me? Weed, one day. This one day? I was too, I was too paranoid. It was in high school. Oh my I God. Got from this other dude. And I did a transaction or whatever. And I was like, what the fuck y'all doing? Like, come on. Like, yeah, meet me in the bathroom. Yeah, third floor. Mm -hmm. And they was taking forever. And I was like, fuck. You start getting paranoid. They set me up. Leaving. Yeah, yeah. They trying and to I set made, me up. I made another sale, like, like towards the end, almost the end, end of school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like, nah, this ain't, this ain't. <laughs> He said, don't even come back here with yo, that bullshit. Yo, yo. Oh, my God. You talking about motherfuckers talking to you with their eyes, man. That nigga said, help me. Please don't do it. No, no. I work here. Please leave me. Yeah, leave he, me out. Leave me out. He, he Please. Do, he skip me. He's doing skip reform me. shit. He can't go from reform back. That you know motherfucker mean? eyes got bleak. Please. I don't, he had to go to the bathroom. I got to take this call real quick. Tom, <laughs> really I want to know what drugs you ever sell. Keep it a thousand. I know Tom to flipped some gas before. Tom so probably sold crack. What? I knew it. He from South Philly. Everybody in South Philly sells crack. Come on. I, that's how it be. They, if you watch that um, documentary, the Meek really explains his case. That kind of explains like the culture of South Philly at the mm. time. Like it was like how. Um, 
you know how some people run their blocks tight, so it's like you don't even meet who person the shit is. You just have a job. You're either the caseworker, you just gotta hand it to the guy, you just gotta get the money or whatever. Cause that's really the first job they give a kid is caseworker. You know what that yeah. is? That's just like managing. So the po- they coming up. You feel me? You the first person say they coming up. So the next person can say they coming up. Next person, if motherfucker say where it's at, you do the point in. That's caseworking in Delaware. They call it tout. And I remember my boyfriend at the time. I, I used to go with this boy named Khalil Bell. He went to jail so much. I never forgot his PP number seven seven nine nine four four. Khalil Bell. He went to jail for caseworking like three times. Back to back. They couldn't get him on nothing else. They would literally lock him up for saying like a DT and walk up. Who got the weed? Khalil go oh beer. They lock him up. <laughs> The streets. Somebody wrote into the podcast and they wanted to tell. They wanted us to tell drug stories. I'm like, that's not going to be a long list because Tom doesn't do drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, that's what I thought about, like entrepreneurship. Yeah, you ain't had to give up no piece or nothing. No, my, that's how they reel you in, though. Mm-hmm. And it could have been you, right? Mm-hmm. Same mm-hmm. nigga. You ain't have to put that together or nothing. It's already together. You know, it's just... Mm-hmm. You stay quiet back <laughs> That shit was so funny. That shit was so funny. Based bro. on where he told us he did his second stint. First and second stint. Both the places. What, what area? Oh, oh, the area area. Don't the area, yeah. He told us where. <laughs> um, oh, just... Like process going to come in and out. Yeah, yeah. You know, I missed that whole wave almost. Word. I don't know. Like, when I was outside, and don't get it fucked up, I was always the kind of person that, like, I really, it would really irritate me. Like, when I would read or when I would learn something else about history, and the story will always be. Um, like the man getting over, you know, and in my mind, it's like, don't nobody put more emphasis on being law abiding than poor people. Like it's, it's such a, like a concern with people that don't have shit yeah, to, to not, break the law. Yeah, not break the law. Perfect example, Phelps, me and Phelps, Phelps has road rage. Me and Phelps, with, we and Phelps, Phelps kept putting me on to the niggas in the track of trailers that'll cut you off when you trying to avoid, when you trying to go around traffic. So let's say it's wall to wall traffic. You saying, fuck it. You going to take that side lane. That's not a lane. A track of trailer nigga put his truck over there because he Remember stopped Remember he almost it. ran us off the highway? But when you told me that, I had never saw that. Yeah. And I was really thinking, this nigga's crazy. It just happened to me the other day. And it was so bad that he was this close to hitting me. That's how concerned yeah. he was at me not being yeah, able. Yeah. And I ain't going front. I went too far. I literally rode that motherfucker for 10 miles. <laughs> like, I rode that shit county to county. But I had it. I had it and I had to pee. I was going to tell the cop I had to poop. People never know this thing could be an emergency too. Like I got poop. Is that enough? Or fucking if my child lay, they. I'm gonna just poop. As soon as you pull me over, I'm just let it go. In an effort to get it, can I be real with y'all? And this is silly, but it's serious. That used to be my rape plan. If somebody tried to rape me, to poop, let it out. That was my plan. I think it's pretty solid. No pun intended. I'm a doodle. This nigga gonna he gonna beat me up, disgusted. Cause I'm a doodle. I ain't going for this shit. You gonna take my pocketbook and my pussy, nigga? Fuck you. This is crazy. You gonna take my bag and this cat? Man. Nigga be in the county tell this nasty bitch. She shat everywhere. <laughs> nasty bitch. I was just trying to get her back. This bitch get the shit. You know what you was trying to get, Rodney. And it wasn't my bag. My bow. Alright, let's get serious, guys. Please. What was we talking about, folks? I'm over all these braids. I'm over it. I don't know. My hair hurt. We was just talking. Mm-hmm. It's starting to come back. We were just talking about. Uh, what were we talking about? <clears throat> Drugs. So. What the fuck did you just say? What you said? <laughs> I ain't going to tell you what I thought you said. Um, uh, yeah, it sounds crazy. Never got to be in. I'm sorry, guys at home. Stick with me. Never got to be in with a belt. Um, but I had that little incident with my father. Well, I didn't have a lot of experience with my father. My father went to jail when I was four or five years old. He did not come home till I was 14. He did 10 years upstate. He had a five to 10. He turned a five to 10 to 10 flat. My father is like five, four, 
brown skin, curly hair, gorgeous. If I was a man and I was up there doing 15 years, I might pull that nigga, put my fingers on that nigga hair, tongue kissing myself. So he was up there getting it in. You hear me? Because from a father to a father, ten to ten is crazy. I mean, and I was madly in love with my father. My mother was really depressed when I was growing up. My mother worked a lot. So my dad coming to get me, taking me to the hood, just having me in the mix, you know? Like my dad did shit like uh, nobody was allowed to ride in the front seat but me. Like it's probably small or dumb, but to a little kid, you feel like the cat's meow. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, he just vanished. I just remember being really affected by that as a kid. Like, it was so upsetting to me. Like, where's my fucking dad? Mm -hmm. And they would be, yo, he in the army. He had the vet. He had the this. He had the that. And it's like, what the fuck? And I finally talked to him on the phone. And the niggas was in the background, pussy, motherfucker, bitch, pussy. And I said, are you in jail? <laughs> because even at four or five, I, I, in my mind, an army man doesn't cuss. He's a good man. He's a good guy. Yeah. So they're talking so nasty. He can't be in the army. He must be in jail. And I remember he chuckled, he told me, yeah, and I was like heartbroken about it. But that really kind of um, formulated how the way I thought about stuff and looked at things. So when you're talking about authority and laws, yeah, I was like 12 or 13 and I went to Macy's and I don't know how I was at Macy's alone. And I'm asking this bitch to see shit and I finessed a pair of diamond earrings. That's the first like big thing I stole. And I put the motherfuckers, like I slipped them up my jacket and I got them. And I was a little kid for yeah. real. And I remember walking away like, oh, it's a lit. I'm on this. Like I'm about to be a jewel thief. <laughs> But I was never able to steal any other jewelry. More jewelry after that. And then the big scheme of things, Macy's is pretty low brow, you know. But as a kid, I was like, oh my God, I felt like Brad Pitt when he was flying shit. Mm -hmm. Remember when he was a pilot and the Navy man and all that? Pink Panther. Y'all know the movie where Brad Pitt was a fraudster? What is wrong Brad with Pitt wasn't in Pink Panther. Separate movies, separate correlations. Y'all don't remember. Thomas. You don't remember the movie where Bad Pitt was a real bad liar. He was doing check scams, and Tom Hanks was on his ass, and that's who was looking for him. No, that's story. that's Catch Me If You Can. Yes, that's Leonardo what DiCaprio. Did. Yeah, I, I I said them at the same time, but I knew the separate it's movies. Leonardo. Yeah, I was not Brad Pitt. Thank you, baby. <laughs> it's like cute white boy, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Chad and Tatum. <laughs> they all the same to you. Put them in a bucket. Put salt on them. They white boys. You know what I mean? I don't know the niggas apart. I like Matthew McConaughey. That's the West, my white boy in the Lincoln. You like drama and navigator? So do I. I would totally fuck Matthew McConaughey, guys. What you think about that? That's your business. Anyway, um, what was I just talking about? I think we should start editing out when I forget what I'm talking about. We need to tighten this podcast I don't up. Know. It's in the dumps. It is right now. Shitty. It's just a bad week for me to answer that kind of question. We need to turn it up. You know, Adam podcast, he interviews people, then he fucks them on camera. You trying to try some stuff like that? Yeah. Trying to get nasty? Huh? Plug talk. Yeah. He let a nigga fuck his wife in the face, in the mouth, and the ass. What you think about that as a married man? Oh, y'all both married niggas. What do you think about letting somebody plow drive your wife, especially from the BBC side, right? In an effort to get the show jumping and get some more views. For six figures. Have you ever smoked a nigga? That's the vibe you just gave me. That you didn't drop shit. I think we got a gangster in the room. You playing all them games about that pop. It's him. <laughs> Cats out the bag and telling his own story. <laughs> I'm not asking you nothing else. How, but yeah, Tom, what do you think about that? Adam, my boy Adam, 22, let a BBC fuck his wife's mouth on their porn channel. A big black cock, if you were slow, if you didn't know what that BBC is. Adam, the white guy that got the um, skater look to him, he does the hip hop interviews, he let his wife mouth area be fucked by a big black cock on their show plug talk y'all gonna have to get this boy therapy after this he was not ready for this why are y'all bringing him and y'all didn't prepare him are you okay are you like offended or disgusted you're very handsome you're the model how old are you don't have no kids this shit gonna make you ugly um what are you talking about you got like a cousin that sells drugs that you can hit me up with? Something. He, I, don't <laughs> I don't care. Any of y'all. Like 35 over, dedicated to the street life, not giving it up. That's my boy. That's him. He said 24. Oh, he needed the night. What'd you say? 
that work 24, 24, 22, 23, 24, 24, whatever. I don't care. I don't discriminate. I'm only 32, 34, 5, myself, 6, 7, 8, 9, 42. Anyway, plus I lost 10 pounds, so <laughs> let's take a year off this puss. Tom, don't you dare clap for that, you motherfucker. Um, what are we talking about, babe? I forgot. I keep losing track what you say. Huh? White people? No. Oh, no. You know that caused a big thing in the Discord, guys. A white woman came in my personal group, Discord, group chat with all my cousins, and she was like, I really liked it in here, but being that y'all hate white people, I'm leaving. <laughs> And we was like, Suzanne, what are you talking about? It's like, we didn't say Suzanne, but we were like, why? Like, when? You know what I mean? I think people wanted to know when or what made you feel that way. And that's the first thing I wanted to know when I got in there. But I think that, like, on, see, y'all are men, so y'all not going to care. But it's like, you had to have real big balls to be a white woman to come in a black group and say, I'm leaving because y'all don't like white people. Like, what? Yeah. That, you don't, like, why are you even talking like that? Yeah. You know? It's like, Especially if, you, if you're if you attracted to me, then you know I never fucked white people. You know what I mean? It's yeah. never given back. I'm talking about my personal experience or is my parents being a black woman in this fucked up ass country. You got to give me that. Yeah. Like, but you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer in right now. If, you, if you're white, like 100% white, and you don't have a little bit of guilt, you might be... The Klansman. That ain't the worst part. She ain't to say she ain't say white people. She said, oh, she, she, called, she called them ghetto and ratchet. Oh, my. Ghetto, ratchet, thug. That's just nigger hard R in 2024. Mm-hmm. Especially thug. Like, that's, that is lit. Like, yo, I could not believe that. And you know what the worst part is? She didn't give anybody a chance to respond. She left. That's like true white girl crybaby victim type, you know? Like, you didn't even get to bring this home because you carrying it like the lady that you, you feel me? That the motherfucker say they don't like, like that Karen vibe, you know? Imagine your black ass going in a predominantly white male group and y'all golf and then you say, look, as a black man, I just feel like y'all all hate me. Like, have a good day, son. Mm-hmm. I like when I showed up to y'all, I showed up at the wrong, at the wrong part. <laughs> what happened? They had me upstairs at the, at the show on Friday. Yeah, we was like, I'm looking for this nigga. This ain't her crowd, bro. <laughs> it was not one black All right, upstairs. All upstairs. All upstairs. It was in another stage. It was a band. I was like, she's not band playing today. Where? City Wine in Philly? Yeah, wow. <laughs> I called. I was like, hey, you sure? I'm crowd. praying we get the white crowd. I yeah. want a white crowd so I good. I have been into a, a room with yeah. not one. Yeah. Yeah. I really, really want to try a, a white room, a predominantly white room. I feel like my darker jokes will go over well, better with them. And also, they don't know me. Like, I don't have a huge white presence and mm-hmm. fandom or whatever. So I feel like it'll be a fair gauge. And I think that they'll like me. I really do. Not to mention the money is totally different on that side. So, But, yeah, I don't know how I get my foot in the door with that. But I want to try. And I'm almost scared that I ain't going to come um, back. I was about to say, white people do, they more on like the comedy club bag. Like, right, you gotta yeah, I would have to start stages. A couple mm-hmm. shows in a one day or, or whatever, but I love my people so much, but I will never come back. And that's the thing, it's like everybody talking all this shit. It's a drill rapper. Y'all like rap? You like rap? Y'all like drill? Yeah, Y'all, do y'all fuck with enough to know some of the stars? Yeah. OT7 Kwani? Yeah. No, you? Yeah. So y'all know he just popped up with Donald Trump, right? So Donald Trump comes to Philadelphia, and that's who's taking him place to place. And he got the and he got with the, the Make America Great Again. And he got the wackest cheese steak. Like so bad, huh? Max is nah, bro. They went to the uh, they went to Tony Luke's, but you know how it's new. It's not the same. I just went there like last year. That joint is ass. You know, Tony Luke's in the culinary world is really known for their pork sandwich, not their cheese. Yeah. Steak. But, um, and I think it's something different now. It's like Tony and Nick's or what's something. What's your name? What's your name? Um, uh, what's his name? Henry. What's your name? Henry. Henley? Yeah. Yeah, so OC7 Kwani comes with Donald Trump. People going crazy. You know, do y'all know uh, Sleepy Hollow and uh, what's the big black? Chef G. Chef G, y'all know them? Cyborg. I give Chef G some of the scoochie. That's my type. Black like that, like midnight black. Like you can't see him. Chef, Chef, Chef. Yeah, I, I had a big crush on him as a kid. Mm. 
Huge. Now I'm like, what the fuck did I see him? Was it Blade? Ooh, Wesley Snipes is not cute. I like Nino Brown. That's who I like. Yeah. What are you, 6'3"? You think you better than somebody? I'm 6'4". 6'4". Um... You want some? Mm-mm, this... I'm not worried about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Oh, yes, I am. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm all right. So, listen. You know, I don't want to get you, don't, they hit niggas with fees and all that, don't they? Not even that, I just don't want him to feel like that. Yeah. Um, guys, yeah, I feel like I didn't even finish my summers as a kid in the ghetto, but I hope I did. I hope I could take you down memory lane because, I don't know, we just lived such a cool life. Our kids don't do nothing but argue on group chats and take pictures and shit. They don't go outside. I don't even think they've ever seen like worms or ants. I was about shit. to say, I don't feel like kids get like outside scars no more. Like, Boy, you know, did you ever play with boy? a bug, my nigga? I used to, yeah. pick, I used to pill, take a lightning bug apart and put that nigga ass on my ring finger and I had a ring on all day. We used to do that. Have Catch you ever me. made a ring out of a fucking bug, my nigga? No. Have you ever tortured a fucking bug? Have you ever caught some shit and put it under the sun and watched this nigga melt? Like, what type of childhoods did you niggas live, man? Nah, for real, though. I remember when it was a big deal with jumping, and that's all we did was jump each other. And I remember getting jumped and being like, damn, I hope I don't hit the ground. I remember hitting the ground and looking at feline prints and shit, getting <laughs> kicked in my head. I remember um, dressing up for Halloween, but I wasn't supposed to because we was Muslim, and when I went there, somebody stole one of my sneakers, and I had to walk home with one shoe on. <laughs> I love the ghetto. I remember being in a shootout and being so scared, like, oh my God, like so scared. Me and the guy locked eyes because he did it on a bike when he rode by. And I remember I bumping him in, bumping into him at the hoagie place called Mark's. And when I bumped into him, I was so scared I peed on myself. Life in the ghetto. What a joy. <laughs> Post-traumatic stress. I was so scared of him. And I remember when he noticed I was so scared, he laughed. Like, girl, I was trying to kill Mookie, not you, bitch, relax. <laughs> he rolled by and he was pop, pop, pop. And we were like, ah. And I remember I froze. So, you know, it's like fright or flight. And you st st I was so scared and stuck that the lady like dragged me like this up the steps. It was crazy. And then my mother runs down the street and she's like, Damona, Damona. Because I wasn't allowed to be out there, but I put them down there anyway. And, um, She's running down the street with the road open, titties. And I'm like, girl, your titties is out. And she's like, what the fuck? She had me in the suburbs within three years. That's a bad bitch by herself. Yeah, she scared, scared her. It was scary. Y'all never been in shootouts? Yikes. <laughs> you say some shit like everybody gonna be late. And be like, uh, no. You guys never had a gangbang? No. That's probably the one thing I ain't never had to experience like that. Bunk with a gangbang or a shootout? Either or, there ain't been a lot of shooting. I ain't have to like it would be you feel me drive by, you feel me shit like that, niggas. Yeah. But well, you don't really know or see. Yeah, it, but not not like well, I'm with niggas and we gotta stand down and <laughs> fire. Nah, it wasn't. When you come from the smaller places, everybody know everybody, so it wouldn't get too too crazy like that. Depending on where you live, really. outsider come in go crazy, but mm -hmm. amongst each other, niggas went wild out too much. Man, and I remember. Like, I, that's the biggest memory of stuff like that was, like, just being scared after the fact, you know. But I talked to Rhonda about that before. She went outside when she wasn't supposed to, and she gets in the middle of this big-ass shootout in Baltimore, and she's scared to death. And it made her not go outside no more for a while. <laughs> you feel me? Because yeah. it's scary. But when we were kids... It was a lot of fun and it wasn't a lot of fear. Like I even thought about we would walk to the pool 15 deep. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Going to the pool 15 deep just to break the rules and get out and then somebody do get in it. Yo, that shit used to be drawing. Like yo, the pool in the hood, like, I don't know. Our summers was the shit, man. I just bumped into online an adult water park and um, it looked fun. I think it's in Scranton, Pennsylvania or something. And somebody was in the comments like, well, it looks like everything's open at night. What do you do when it get cold? And whoever run the page at a, at a water park said, drink. <laughs> like, bitch, what the hell is going on? What is going on? Right up. Yeah, what the hell is going on? Did you just turn the knob on your phone? Yeah. I got to hit you back, lover. Say hi to the podcast because they miss you. Go ahead, I'm going to turn the volume up. Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Who that, Rhonda? Where's Phelps? 
Say hi to everybody in the Oh, that's mom. Room. Yeah, that's mom. Hey. He didn't call. He didn't call you mom. Call her stinky butt. I know that voice. I don't stink. Has it ever stunk? Oh, there he is. You know we have identical vaginas, my mom. Good Say today. hello, everybody. We have identical vaginas. Can you bring me back some medicine. Mom, he's my favorite one. I'm gonna tell you when we get home. He my favorite one. He my second favorite one. He's my second favorite one because I. He, he looks like a problem. Okay. Mom, he is. Mom, I said that. You smell it on him, but he is a Libra. Oh my God. Oh, they're problematic. Yes, he looks like he could be one of us, Mr. Green Eyes. He looks like don't call me white boy. And no, Henley, no. Henley has a fan. He, he, Hen look, he been sipping light skin. I don't appreciate him at all. And Henley is Henley is really handsome, so I don't really know how to take Henley. Who's handsome? Henley. He got a fancy why name. Why are they acting so quiet? Everybody's scared of you. You are a big damn bully. <laughs> Goodbye. Stop looking at me. You guys, I, Let me see my arch nemesis I, again. I see you got your little cancer bandana on here. <laughs> Say hi to Tom, Mom. What's up? There go Tom. You got to congratulate Tom. That's Mr. Manning, man. Oh, yeah. We got to get out of here, y'all. This is great. This was a good podcast. There's a couple other things I want to talk about, but I really, really can't remember. Um, shout out to Dr. Umar saying to Shannon Sharp and um, Ocho Cinco <laughs> that they Wait, said put it together right let me put it together Umar says cut that nigga down just hang up bye girl hang up Tom My, hang up Tom press the red button um Shut Dr. Up. Umar says so Shannon Sharp Ocho Cinco y'all want me to believe that you don't date black women because no black woman ever called you handsome so you want me to believe that a white woman <laughs> called you handsome? Shout out to Umar for that. Everybody send good vibes and tag him <laughs> and email him and get in his comments and say, Umar, we want an Umar and don't call me white girl collab. It is time for this to happen. We have reached out millions of times. Right. The middleman acting funny. He don't want to pass the phone number. This is me to you, Dr. Umar. I want you to come and sit down with me, the king of consciousness. I live six minutes away from your school. I was over there sweeping the other day, brother. Come on, man. <laughs> all my kids Yo, you know what? That's school, what we got to do. We got to go sit outside that motherfucking and building and wait a bro. <laughs> come on, make me beg. You, you like you know that, Your man. pale, light-skinned sister wants to talk to the king of fucking consciousness, man. Tap the fucking Dr. Umar. Whatever we gotta do, we willing to the do, prince man. Of the prince of pan-Africanism, <laughs> man. We ready, man. I love y'all. We gonna do one shit, I guess. Let me see. We could do a voicemail. Play the voicemail, Phelps, if you don't mind. I'm gonna look for a damn real fast. Uh, I had one in mind. If I can't find it, I'm going to wait. I really got to talk to y'all on the sub ASAP. I need to have a family conversation. Shout out to Philadelphia Philly Philly Show. Your vibes were off. Me and Tom agree. Your vibes were off. We don't care. We're not biting our tongue. Y'all was in there acting the fuck corny. Who was y'all on your psych meds? Were y'all on Xanaxes? What the fuck? Did you take Trazin on the day before? Did you not get no dick? And y'all was talking while I was talking and I don't like that. I started to fight one of y'all, but the meet and greet was lit and it lit it back up. But don't be being rude. And my aunt was in there and she is grown grown. I think I really fuck one of y'all up on my aunt. Stop playing. Go ahead, folks. Hey Luna. This is one of your cousins from Alabama. Hey Luna. Hey Luna. He waited to give. But, and then the second question is, how do I make sure that dick not wet? Because I'm not trying to like have sex with him and then the dick is wet. So let me know what I should do. What she say about the dick being whack or wet? Whack. She said, what do I do if the dick is whack? She's trying to make sure. It ain't no I, way to make sure. I know if it's not whack and I will test it. Yeah, basically. You don't. That's, you that's, have to test it. Yeah. So what is this nigga, the Muslim or something? Why she can't fuck him? She said she's 
said it's too soon, Sean. Well, she said a, a year, year, right? Over the year? Yeah, I think so. Write it back and make sure it's been a year, folks. Just like skim through it real quick so we can get them a real drawn. Damn, what she set her off the rip? Abstinent for a year and some change. Okay. Um, so what's on her, I guess, because she being abstinent, right? So. I want you bitches to stop calling. What are you, What is she asking? She, she, she said she's celibate. She she want to know how if the dick is whack or not, and she want to fuck basically. Yeah. I mean, the only there's she no way cool. to know how the dick is without testing it. I mean, you could like judge by like like I like I always felt like niggas that could dance could fuck. Like if this nigga, he know all them TikToks. Imagine what he gonna do when he get up in that thing. Shout out to D Sturdy. That's only one. It's only one way to find out. Let me stop fucking playing with D Sturdy. <laughs> Let me stop playing with that man. Advice. Get Fuck him, grow up, up little ass kid. Yeah. I'm sorry, let me be quiet while you land that. What's the advice, Phelps? Get that hole up, man. It's easy. You like him, he doing Damn, all the right Mr. Man. She like him, he been doing. You know, that wasn't your first time getting that cat the other day on a 14. <laughs> you had that motherfucker flip fry laid to the side. You done had that cat, you done filleted it, blackened it, steamed it. <laughs> Sauteed it. Did you? That's normal though. Boy, I'd have woke you up with coochie on your head. <laughs> He'd have woke up with pussy lips on his eyebrows. <laughs> you gonna eat this pussy now, I'm your wife. Eat it and like it. You gonna eat it, you gonna like it. I'm sorry. I don't even behave this way, really. Um. I'm gonna read this DM just because it's ridiculous. And let me first give you a little background. The response that I'm getting is um, a response to Phelps because Phelps was on a podcast a week or two ago and I asked Phelps, have you ever been in a situation where a woman just grabs your penis aggressively <laughs> and you enjoyed it? Phelps' answer went viral. It went viral on the streets. Phelps' answer was, not in this country. <laughs> <laughs> passport bros love that I, I don't even got no passport but anyway um, this person was pissed by your answer because it's always somebody pissed by the answer at the end of the day what Phelps meant it was a joke but in other countries sometimes people practice prostitution and they're a little handsy but that is not a comparison now what does all this stem from Remember Michael Rainey got grabbed by, what's it mm -hmm. called, little sister? You ain't see it? You ain't missing much. You know who Michael Rainey is, right? Um, the ghost son off Power. Y'all know him? Yeah, Tyreek. Tyreek, right. Um, the streamer is pretty popular. Do you know that streamer's name? He's in Kai Sanat's group of friends, the streamer. Phantom Duke? It might be Phantom. Maybe. I think Duke the only other one like I could like know that's him. By face, right? Yeah. Tom, can you find out for me real quick? But anyway, they're doing this live stream. Michael Rainey comes in, right? This is the weird part. If I'm Michael Rainey, right? This is a child. And the chair is the girl. Talil is his name. Who? Talil. Talil is the streamer name. Um, but do y'all see the proximity? The room is really small, so it's like a webcam. The kid is, this is the, this will be the kid. I'm Michael Rainey, the chair is the girl and she's reaching around grabbing his penis. And he's like, <gasps> like that's his first reaction is shock. Like he don't look happy about it. And I don't know why anybody would be happy about it, but he mm -hmm. looks like, oh my God, what the fuck? He don't grab her right away. She get the, you wanna let me take, you know, she in New York bitch. Word the mother, word the mother, B. I'm trying to take you out, B. I'm bringing this thing like a bell, B. 
Imagine me bringing this thing soft. Word to mother, word to my dad. Let me take you out, word to my dad. Now you New York bitches is a turn off. I said it. Super tough, Timberland boot in July, relax. And that come from my aggressive ass Philly That's bitch. not all of them. Love Don't us. Do that. Like, are you crazy? Soften it up, my mind. Get some jurgens. You aggressive as shit. Sounding like you just smoked a pack of ports. It's, never mind. I cool out! I don't want them on my heels. Listen. Um, I want to talk about that little girl so bad, but I think it's a lie and that's our friend. And I don't want to offend him in any way. I'm going to text you. That's just not my problem. That. Okay. Anyway, this is the nigga's comment from Phelps saying, no. How about this? We got a whole new group of men. Have you ever had a woman, a female, aggressively like grope you and that turned into a good thing? Let me see what Exactly. Yeah. This is perfect. So show them. This is exactly how it looked. And to me, that was the weirdest part, the little girls. You know what I mean? Because even if I was liking her, I feel it, like that's going to turn me off. They're so, they're so close that if she grabbed it and he moved her hand, her hand would hit one of them in the back of the head. That's how close yeah. the person is. Show on him, please, Miguel. Oh, you did? You did? Um, I don't care. Show Miguel again. I want you to see the way they framed it there, Miguel. How serious it was? Yeah, like, Why you said that? I actually would see his response and how he was responding. What was the response? Was it was it a written one or video? Well, he did a video. It was more so on the defense side. Like at first, then he recanted and came back. Oh, so what's the defensive one? What did he say? What was his vibe with that? Was, like chill out on my sister, nigga. It was kind of like that in a sense. Like, and I think that's the reason why uh, Tyreek didn't respond. Like, how he want to respond was when he in his house. And he whispers to the man, the dude, what happened? He's like, what happened? Because they was laughing. Man, she did that. Like that. Mm -hmm. And he was like, just chill. And he turned back around and was like, I oh, would y'all laugh about what's all right. And they was like, nah, bro, we'll tell you later. Not doing your podcast. Like, oh, okay. Ruined it for him after it happened. And then it went viral after that. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Then everybody went at Tyreek, like, bro, he shouldn't be mad. Like, nah, bro. Like, you just grabbed me. And I just supposed to be okay with So what the, depends, like, what this, this, this a man, this a man's response? Hmm? This a man's response? This is a man, but it's gonna throw you off when I read it, hold on. But yeah, that's crazy. I don't know, um, I don't know, like, and I said it to all my little cousins on here because sometimes you do like a boy and you want to show him or sometimes that boy is moving too slow for you or you might be getting a vibe that he like you but you, he wants you to make the first move, that ain't how you make it. Mm -hmm. And the way I explained it, I said it as a joke and it is a joke, but we're the only ones getting used to getting like sexually assaulted and groped. They're not used to that. Mm -hmm. Like that's the experience we had. Mm -hmm. We go to the nightclub and somebody gropes you randomly. I just saw this girl that went viral on TikTok because she's at a festival. Some big fat white boy behind her is just groping her. She turned around, punches ass in the face on beat. She goes viral for it. Mm -hmm. But that's an experience we have on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Like that's a regular thing. If I go to a nightclub, somebody's gonna grab my ass in the crowd because I can't pinpoint who's, who it is, you know? Mm -hmm. That's our experience. That's what we go through. But you know, I don't know what old girl was thinking um, you know, she ain't that cute. Them bitches gotta do stuff. My wife was, did a similar thing, though. Did she? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a FaceTime letter to you. All right, but I'm, how did you receive it? So, I was on friend time. So, I didn't know. We've been friends for so long, I never knew that she was She friend. felt like that. Yeah. And, like, I felt like my wife was out of my ballpark. Right, right, out she your lead. Like, yeah. She's gonna be my friend. I never made it. She is a bad bitch, bro, dude. I just say yeah. that. And I came over, I was coming over a crib a lot. I was talking about some music, writing some music, and then she just, her things started to change. I just thought she wanted to break. Like, she was like, hey, just watch me for a little bit. But I never put the sign so I'm not paying attention. I got friends on them. And then she just made a move. And I just, when she first did the move, I just was like, shot by it. But that's the thing. And it was in private. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, in that's, private. That yeah. move is a little bit different because the goal with that move is to fuck you. So it's like, when I was telling them, and I'm not saying you're debating or anything, but when I was telling young girls, my whole thing was like, yo, if you use that on a tactic to flirt, because there's a bunch of girls that do that, they ain't even ready for mm -hmm. So you, you just did that when he take it there with you, it's like, oh yeah, shit, chill, because you don't realize 
what you doing or the key you turning. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, for me, that's really what I thought because I had seen in. I'm the one that noticed and talked about it with some of my gay friends, like my lesbian friends. Lesbians are super aggressive with each other like that. Like it's a, So many times I'll be out with like one of my girlfriends, that's a little dykey stud type, and bitches walk up like they want to fight. And I be thinking, damn, we got to, it's time to run, but the whole time she just want to fuck. Like, that's very, and when I say it, they're going to be all in the comments. It's very popular with the lesbians. I don't know about other gay people, but with the girls, that's how they carry it. You know what I mean? And it's like, for me, I will punch you in your face, bitch. You're not going to get nowhere with me, bitch. What, what, what? You know what I mean? Like, that's mm -hmm. not going to make me, you know? But I appreciate your end, but that's totally different because it's different. You feel me? This shit with her, she thought... That bitch grabbed him. First of all, in their age group, he is totally like that nigga. He was in your yeah. house, you ain't do nothing. Girl, I grabbed that motherfucker, grabbed that meat, and looked out, locked out of that nigga. Yeah. I told that nigga, I will co sign on a Honda for you. <laughs> Shit, okay. Real quick, and we out of here. Demona, your co host is lying. He's lying because I actually like a sexually aggressive woman. But one time, there was this girl no who tried to force me. Mad. My fault. Is that again, what you say? No coochie getting ass, nigga. Just weird, because it's like, <laughs> you didn't lie. What you said was you the only experience out of the country. Yeah. That's the only time it's happened to you. Yeah. That's all you said. So what the fuck did you lie about? He just wanted to tell his kinky story. <laughs> um, and it says Dr. Mona, so I know this nigga's throwed off. Your call is lying. He's lying, because I actually like a sexually aggressive woman. But one time, there was this girl who tried to force me aggressively after saying she's celibate. I ran half-dressed out the room. I don't know. It was just weird. What What if this is the nigga writing about the girl that just wrote about the being celibate and the guy? Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> if they wrote in about each other, wouldn't that be hilarious? Listen to this shit. It's the same story. Look, one time there was a girl who tried to force me aggressively after saying she's celibate. I ran dressed out the room. I don't know. It was just weird. And I tried to help her keep her celibacy. We eventually dated for years and it was lit all the time. But since then, I like for a girl to blank me. Four letters. I can't say that on YouTube. Yeah. Grape me. I think this is also because I've been rejected sexually by women. I've been the friend and the fun guy. <laughs> so what seeing, I said. <laughs> so seeing you want me sexually is eternal. My ex and me split because of cultural differences. I do not like an aggressive attitude like New York chicks. I'm not your homie and you can't curse at me. But tell me that pussy mine. Tell me to fuck the shit out of you and to pull my pants down now and put it in your mouth. Nasty ass Bro, nigga. I wanted to write back. Can you find somebody else to talk to about this? <laughs> You're not asking me advice. You just happen to mention that you really want me to peg you. Bro, here's my cash app, my nigga. Let's get this shit going. It's you like, I mean? he seemed like he never got, he never had sex Nothing. with a woman without without it already being on the table. Like, a, you feel me? Like Right. If it wasn't not, already mapped out, he wasn't getting he it. He wasn't getting it. That's, that's AKA, if she wasn't already going through a breakup. <laughs> <laughs> or she wasn't already going through a spiritual awakening, Poppy. You was never getting this pussy. Now I know at home it looked like to you I'm packing my bag. And that's because I am. I had a good time <laughs> with you guys today. I love you. Writing, calling, talking, chatting. Tour over. We might tap back in. As of right now, most lit place, North Carolina. Y'all won. Y'all got my favorite cousins in the motherfucking world, nigga. Ooh. All that. And this coochie fat. And it's that. tight. And you know what's going on. And my feet done. So that's all that matters, bitch.